Development Commission meeting minutes for June 13th and the 20th. Let's look at the 13th first. Are there any changes or uh, comments regards to the minutes for the 13th? Uh, yes, on resolution 0722, the, the motions and vote is not recorded. Um, and on that one, let's see, Doug Holtz moved to approve resolution 07, 2022, and it was seconded by Beaudry, and the vote was five to zero. I don't see that on my copy. Did anyone else? No, I. And then I had made some uh, comments during that meeting right before that vote uh, about asking Jim Treat about calculating percentage of TIF capture. Could he calculate what percentage of TIF we are capturing to know if we are capturing the correct amount since we have balances totaling over $13 million with no detail on the future use of these funds. Jim Treat responded that projections could include other than debt service as long as we have a plan to use those funds. With less than two years to include the Grand Junction Plaza final debt, we could, for example, bond less than the $35 million for about a $2 million payment and take some of these $13 million balances and pay in cash and bond the balance. Not all obligations are fully quantified, but the statute is satisfied that we must be able to utilize the TIF funds for debt, future debt, or future projects on the table and being discussed. Okay, Linda, I tell you what, let's carry these minutes over to the next meeting, John. Give you an opportunity to change that. that that's fine. The, the to add the motion, and then uh, Linda, if you would forward those notes, those are good notes. Forward it to John. I think please. I did. <laughs> I don't know if they. Those made. the clerk does the minutes. Yes, and I forwarded so, them to her. And you did. Did okay. you get them? I thought. I, okay. I did that this morning. I thought you would have gotten them. All right. Now, well, I'll check with Kim. Okay. And we'll yeah. go from there. We'll sure. Carry we that over we can carry it over. Make that's, sure we've got accurate minutes. That's, that's fine. fine. Good, good points. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, meeting minutes for June 20th. Any changes, comments in regards to those minutes? Yes. I have some on that. I have some comments on that one, too. Um, let's see what paragraph this is. Under resolution 08-2022, it should say a rate not to exceed, there should be a dollar sign, $1,040,000. And then in that discussion in the second paragraph there, um, Jim stated there will be a gap in the first two years as it will take four years to build and generate full TIF on phase one, summer 2024, built 2020, uh, 2024, built 2025 assessment and TIF payable 2026, second phase one year after that. We have lit pledge, but Jim suggests programming another TIF in the area to pay the difference rather than lit in discussing refinancing debt jim explained that can occur in 10 years um, another correction down on resolution 10 20, 22 executive director uh, the second line should say 60 day period and then uh, i wanted to list the four main points that uh, cam had entered was four main number one front door for prospective projects, number two, liaison and service to RDC, number three, managing ongoing projects like Union Square, number four, maintain communications with other city agencies, state, county for redevelopment projects. It did not include broad or grand authority, and then continue that last sentence as is. Um, let's see. That was it. I think the okay, best. now did, you said you sent that to the clerk yeah. and John? I sent it to the clerk. I think she sends to John. Right, yeah, she's the one. Kim puts the right. minutes together from the videos. That is correct, Joe. Kim puts these together. Okay. So if you want to let this go, yeah, we'll just, yeah, we if can, John, if John we'll didn't get it, it in time. Nothing to do with the minutes. What? Manny, go ahead. This is Manny. I just, I just want to remind everybody that the, the minutes aren't supposed to be a transcript. Um, certainly, if there are points that Ms. Mass has raised or anybody else has raised that need to be included, those should be sent to the clerk so they could be included and there's a proper record of the proceedings. So I'll recommend you table this one as well and have um, those points included by the clerk's office and then re resubmit it for, to the RDC. Okay, we can, we'll do that, Manny. We'll resubmit it. Linda, if you do send these types of corrections out, please copy the entire commission. I don't think I was copied on it. Okay. I don't know that anybody well, else I, got it. 
So please, you know, again, any emails on the commission, please copy all members okay. on any of the emails that you send out. We will carry this over to the next meeting uh, uh, to make sure that we've got a full and complete set of minutes for uh, those two dates. Thank you, Linda. Uh, okay, next item is approval of claims. John, anything you want to cover on these? No, they're pretty standard. It's, yeah, it's pretty this, standard yeah. I, from what I see. Jeremy, you have some comments you want to make? No? Okay. Uh, do we have any questions from uh, commission members in regards to the claims? I guess I wanted to ask, uh, this is Linda, John, on the, th the last item where it says general services include discussions and updates to tax increment revenue projections, is that being added like to uh, the FSG report? And we'll see that later, or is there something to see now on that? Yes, that will be part of FSG, and there's nothing right now. We're still doing all the research. Um, okay. Does that answer your question? Yeah, I just wondered if there was any documentation that went with no, those. Not at this point, no. Charges, no, okay. Well, I mean, there are working papers that we share. Okay. But there's no documentation at this point. Okay, and then on the Dinsmore billing copy that we got, mm -hmm. um, can we just get that corrected so that the bill does not go to Todd Bertrand? I guess Jeremy would be the one it goes to in this billing dated June. Oh, he, sure. Yeah, he's got it. She's got it sent. Just might suggest they change that name. Yeah, it should go to Jeremy. Okay. You can let, let Catherine know, John, if you would, please. Okay, with those changes, do I have a motion for approval of claims? I'll make a motion. We approve the claims. Okay, I have a second. I'll second. Okay, second Bob Beaudry. We have a motion on the floor from Linda and a second by Bob Beaudry. All in favor of voting uh, to approve the claims, please signify by saying aye. John, if you'll take a roll. Linda Noss. Aye. Bob Beaudry. Aye. Doug Holtz. Aye. Plankus. Aye. Four claims are approved. Thank you very much. Next item on the agenda is the ratification of current Grand Park user agreements. Matt. <clears throat> Good evening, Commission member members. Um, I did send over the use agreements for the previous term from the last meeting till this one. Um, I did not receive any questions, but happy to take any on that you may have at this time. Okay, uh, commission members, any questions for Matt? Otherwise, we'll open up for a motion for approval. You mean, I mean questions about, as far as the report goes? No, as, as far as the Grant Park user agreement. Oh, That's no. Context. Yes. Oh, okay. Uh, do I have a motion for approval? So moved. Approval of uh, motion by Doug Holtz. Second? Second. Second, Bob Beaudry. Uh, John, please take roll call. Doug Holtz. Aye. Joe Plankus. Aye. Linda Noss. Aye. Bob Beaudry. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is the second quarter report for Grand Park. Matt? Yes, Wait. again, Matt Trinian here uh, on behalf of Grand Park. Uh, with me is William Knox from Legacy Sports Group and on the phone, Blake Hibbler with Bullpen Tournaments. Um, this is our Q2 presentation, just a report and recap of all things Q2 for 2022. So as we get into this, uh, just an update here on our athletes visitor and visits count. Um, so we're trending in a, in a great fashion here. Um, this does include all of the athletes on campus. So um, really good uh, feel for the, the amount of traffic we've seen um, in the first two uh, quarters of the year. So wanted to make sure I shared that inf information. And then wanted to share just a, a financial outlook. So this is specifically regarding the second quarter of this year. As you can see, revenues are a little over $1.1 million and expenses just shy uh, at 90, 976,000 and some change. Um, just a few things to note here. Um, revenues, you'll see a snapshot of a bar graph in comparison of Q2 from 21 to 22. Um, just a quick snapshot there. Uh, one thing that William will report on here in a brief minute is just some of the trends that we're seeing um, in regards to 
uh, the, the event base that we've been able to attract. Uh, in, in regards to our expenses, you'll see that personnel is up from 21 to 22. We have had some additions to the team to increase our scope of services on campus, inclusive of a, a new grounds assistant, a new operations assistant, and then in the second quarter, we brought on um, additional seasonal staff members to help assist with the uh, mowing and upkeep of the grounds on site. The other thing that I wanted to point out here is we've, we've noticed a, an uptick in our insurance and utilities. Um, these are just four buckets that we've grouped together. There's a lot more than just these four, but really wanted to just draw your attention to these four. Um, but with our utilities, we found a pretty significant uh, uptick in our water utility billing. Um, so we've been working with the clerk's office to make sure that those are following the right path and making sure that they're going about the right way. Um, but we have seen an uptick from 21 to 22. And then finally, um, our, our operating expenses are about on par with where they were in 21. We've done a lot of things in-house to um, keep our operating levels uh, about on par. And then our uh, services uh, line is a little bit higher, uh, mainly due to the fact of increased um, costs associated with maintenance of whether it be material. Um, we've also seen a little bit of an uptick in our nightly cleaning um, service services line. So um, again, nothing too major or out of the ordinary there. I think the biggest thing to just point out is just that increased personnel costs uh, with the added staff that we've had to increase our scope of services on campus. One one thing I want to like to comment on, Matt, is I'm. I don't know what kind of contract you have. Obviously, you've got uh, natural gas being used out there at, at GPEC. And uh, I can tell you my quarterly budget bill for the next quarter went from $83 a month to $153 a month. That's the kind, that's almost double. So I don't know what you're going to see. Obviously, you don't have a budget bill, but uh, just a warning for natural gas costs from Centerpoint. Uh, if that's who the provider is, uh, their cost of gas obviously has gone up with inflation and all of the ramifications of the idiotic decisions coming out of Washington D.C. So it's it's going to be it's going to be ugly. Certainly, we've seen some of those increases, and in one which that we're as we currently build out our 2023 budget, we're taking into account to ensure that we have a good base yep. to build off of to cover those costs throughout. Uh, it's going to be significant, unfortunately. Hey, just one quick question. Like un under expenses there, is uh, the legacy contract with Williams Group under services or personnel or where would that be classified? Yeah, that would fall under services. Services? Yes, sir. Okay. So the personnel, um, <clears throat> that uptick, I, I guess I'm just asking, legacy took some of the administrative staff with them when they left last year, but you still have an uptick in personnel. I, I thought we were kind of told when that happened that there would we would see a decrease in personnel. So I'm just curious why personnel increased. Yeah, yeah sure. When he took, I don't, how many people do you take, William, with you? Four, yeah. Sure. Yeah, so many of the, again, all personnel that, that this line is showing is the operations, the client services, our grounds department, and our maintenance department. We've had an addition in our maintenance department as we've seen routine breaks and as we're in year eight of operation, we've seen a lot more breakdowns. So we added one to our maintenance staff. Um, we added uh, one to our grounds team as that continues to, again, an uptick in um, just upkeep of the facility and maintenance of the turf and the grass assets that we have on campus. And then we've added a, a position this year that we didn't have last year in our client services department with the increase of the budget allocation that we've needed to take on this, this side of things. Um, along with the additional clients that we've taken on. So we have had new, new positions created for this year that were not a part of our base last year. So four plus, so I'm guessing six or seven? So we've, we've incre we, we had an additional um, grounds, like I said, one, one full-time grounds assistant. You've got that on the next page. Correct. And, and yeah, that'll show, yeah. Um, but yeah, yes, we just had, asking for clarification. Yeah, correct. Yeah, okay. And, and, and just to be clear, um, we are under budget in our salary lines. Uh, this was all budgeted for these are new positions that we had planned on in increasing, even with the addition of the uh, scope that William and Legacy Sports Group has taken on. Okay. 
Matt, I also noticed hotel revenue went down. What drove that change? Yeah, so in, in uh, quarter two, um, specifically this year versus last year, we had one event that took over um, the, the grass side of the campus where we had to shut down our grass fields for about a two week period in preparation for that event. Because of that, we're in, we are not able to attract the level of event base to backfill those two dates because our inventory shrinks drastically. Yep. Now with that, you'll see an increase for that specific weekend, but it doesn't quite equate to the three weekends that it takes out. Okay. okay. Matt, uh, knowing that expenses are going up, uh, I believe in a couple, the last quarter, you had indicated that you're looking at, you and or William are looking at the rates for year uh, 2023, 2024, et cetera, et cetera. What's the status of that evaluation? Yes. So we've already started to implement some of that in our user agreements that we're signing now moving forward. A lot of that consists of adding on those operational costs that were once just a part of our rack rate. So mm -hmm. simple things like um, paint uh, for paint costs or um, additional inventory costs that traditionally may have been just included in the field rate. Um, we've been working to bake that in, or I'm sorry, extract that from the field cost and include that as an additional cost associated with running events at the facility. Okay. okay. Now, uh, excuse me, on these hotel rooms, um, do you get reports from, what is it, Site Search that does this for us? Correct. So have you seen any other trends there that would cause this to be considerably less? Yeah, so as of right this minute, I have not received, uh, and this is standard, I have not received the May or June hotel report base uh, for this year. So again, this is just cash into those accounts mm -hmm. as we currently sit today. Um, again, our team counts have increased um, from 21 to 22. We have seen somewhat of a decrease in visitors to the campus due to several reasons, um, and that's industry-wide, um, but that, that does play into that piece as well. So is there a, a reason, an, a, a logical expectation that we didn't get May and June, or what you were just saying about the May and June from site search? It's, it's just a reporting cycle. So we traditionally, it's, it's about a two-month basis. So we have, uh, just this past week, we received our uh, month-end report for April um, that pulls in, and, and again, that's just a normal reporting cycle. By the time uh, hotels are able to get back to site search with their final room counts and, and um, uptick in, in rooms claimed for that weekend, it's just, a, again, a part of the normal routine cycle of gathering that information from those sources. Would you, would you say that you've gotten the cash for the most part, but you just don't have the report to support the numbers? It, it follows the report. The cash follows the report. So, so events that take place in Q2, that cash may not come in until Q3 from a hotel standpoint. And that's when you would report it? Correct. Okay, and is that kind of on the honor system? I mean, we work with site search on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. We've, I mean, again, we're, it's another agreement that we've had for eight years, and there's a reason that we've upkept that relationship thus, thus far. Okay, but, but seeing it go down was noteworthy. We've all, and again, I think as we've seen, 21 as a whole, collectively, there were more events in 21 because a lot of events moved to the facility from 20 to 21 because mm -hmm. of our availability and being open. Thus, some of the cash value went up in, in those event bases. Um, we were able to attract new events because of COVID and our availability to be open during that difficult time. Okay. I have one last question. Sorry. Sure. On your visitors uh, and visits and all that, just for like, if you have a team of 15 baseball or softball players that show up on a weekend and they play Friday, Saturday, Sunday, each day they come visit, so is that 15 or 45? So we have the unique visitor count. So by day, that one, if you were to come to Grand Park on Friday, you are one unique visitor. If you were to come to Grand Park three times in that day, that's three visits in that day. So if you had multiple games at Grand Park throughout the day, that is multiple times that you are visiting the campus. You may go eat, eat lunch, grab, right. grab a meal, and then come back. That is another visit or impression to the facility. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Continue on, Matt. And then um, as we did last month, or I'm sorry, last quarter, I wanted to share our department updates here. 
Um, so uh, I, I know there was a question under our administration line regarding the wording on our liquor license. Um, it, it was probably worded um, not as well as it could have been. Essentially, that's an annual process just to renew our liquor license for the campus. We've been going through that process. Um, and, and again, that's on a standard cycle. Um, you'll see some of those standard cycle things that come up in this quarter. Um, from our visitor experience standpoint, I want to draw your attention to the 84% five-star rating of, of the campus. So again, we're still seeing a lot of um, excitement around the facility. From our grounds department, uh, again, with the addition of that, that staff that we added, we were able to save about $30,000 in irrigation repairs and maintenance um, that, that our team was able to do on site. So again, an exciting thing that our team was able to take on on top of the additional or I'm sorry, on top of the routine work that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Our client services, uh, several exciting things to talk about here, but I uh, want to draw your attention to just Suite C and D is a, is a meeting space that some of you have, may have been to in various, um, for various meetings, but we hosted some unique events out of those two areas that are, again, outside of the normal sporting um, capabilities that we've done in the past. We had a blood drive. Uh, we hosted Duke Energy for an open house. Um, HCLA has done a lot of great events out of there. So we're starting to see that, that unique business coming to Grand Park through those areas and through those improvements that we've done to those spaces. Our facilities team, as mentioned, a lot of annual processes come up in Q2. Um, they did a lot of the fire inspection. Uh, and then one of the largest things is our A&E permit was approved in quarter two that allows us to keep the doors open and the park running. So um, props to the facilities team for being able to get that accomplished. and then. Um, our operations team, um, we, we're proud to host two new professional leagues inside of the event center um, with the W League and uh, Lady Victory, who were able to, again, draw in a, a, a women's professional base uh, kind of play there at the facility, which we're proud of. And then as you kind of see sprinkled in there, there's a lot of discussion about the, the attention that started on Colts training camp in Q2. So um, our, our, our team really takes a high focus. Um, once that Q2 really starts and planning really starts to get moving forward. Finally here from my slides, I wanna just showcase, um, again, it's not, not, not necessarily Q2, but did wanna showcase that camp is right around the corner. Some of this activity did take place in Q2, um, but on the right, you'll see a, 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 the fan calendar per se, all of the practices that are available for uh, visitors to come to the park. Um, one thing we're very excited about this year is all but one practice is in the afternoon. Um, we are extremely excited uh, and, and really great collaboration with the Colts organization to move practices from the traditional 9 a.m. practice base, which if you look at previous calendars or schedules, it's a lot of morning practices. Um, so a lot, a lot of great collaborative effort there to move them to primarily noon, um, where we'll, we'll, we will see uh, a significant uptick in um, the food revenue um, that we get from training camp. So we're very excited about that. Two, uh, two practices with the Lions. So we'll have another NFL franchise visit the campus, which again, we're excited about. And then I think most notably, uh, July 30th is an evening practice, which we hadn't had in a few years. Um, this is, a, 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 again, an evening practice where we anticipate probably the largest attendance for Colts camp coming on that day specifically. So. Uh, really uh, just a great collaborative effort to have a favorable schedule for uh, not only Grand Park, but Westfield, driving people to the community. On the left, we have our operations schedule. So again, just some notable things that go along with Colts Camp. Our staff has been taking care of um, working with our vendor to, to work on the bleacher build out, which I think we discussed at our last meeting. That's well underway. Um, and then I think it's, it's something that gets um, overlooked very commonly, but we, we completely flipped the event center from our normal tenant base and our normal operation to fit what the Colts need while they're on site. Um, just today I was talking with the uh, head of operations for the Colts and he walked in, jaw about hit the floor and just said, wow, th you guys did a tremendous job at just getting this facility ready for us for camp. This is and Jeff? Jeff, yes. And we are, it's something we're proud of and, and really excited that they're able to take the space as it, and not skip a beat of their football operations that they normally would have. If you can get him smiling and cheery, that's an accomplishment. 
because he's all serious after 2030. He, he is very serious. Um, uh, again, it's just some other dates there that you'll see is uh, rookies report, uh, July 23rd, veterans report the 26th, and, and that first practice is the 27th. One thing that I don't want overlooked is, yes, there is a heavy emphasis on training camp from our staff standpoint, but we do host other events during the training camp time period. Um, a, lot of, a lot of local leagues start playing. The WISI football season will kick off. Um, but we also have event base, such as the Westside United Kelly Dossi Memorial Classic. Um, so we do have other events that are sprinkled in there. And, and th those are just a few to, to put out there. So I wanted to draw your attention that, yes, there is a hef heavy emphasis on training camp but we also have a heavy event base uh, mixed in as well. So is it very similar to, to last year? We have a lot of hospitality tent area and is so that from, also from the, the way it's set up, yes, Colt City will be heavy with um, vendors. Mm -hmm. um, we, we've worked with the Westfield Restaurant Group to allow um, additional food vendors to come on site and operate, which we're excited about to have multiple options. Um, along with that, a lot of sponsor activation back there for the fan. Again, that fan experience is crucial. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really what, what camp is all about. And that Play 60 field uh, will be active for the majority of camp. The other piece that the Colts are just thrilled about, and we are too, is just that fan interaction. Um, last year, if you may recall, if you were out at camp, it was very restricted. Um, mm -hmm. No autographs, really. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. they were autographing footballs and throwing them up there, but now this year, we're going to be back to the wraparound where the fans will be able to be on field, um, yes, behind a rope line, but, on, I mean, really close to... Closer up. <laughs> correct. And, okay. and again, so really a great relationship that the Colts see how important that is to their fan base and incorporate that at Grant Park. Um, so a lot of those fan interaction pieces will be added back to the original scope that we missed last year. Perfect. Well, I am going to flip it to William Knox, who will give a report um, on Q2 from Legacy's perspective. Thank you, Matt. Good evening, William Knox, Legacy Sports Group. I'll go through some of the similar information that Matt's already shared, but we'll look at the visitor count. I know there was a lot of discussion around this, and you know I can be more candid with you than he can, so I'll just tell you. We're, getting, we're able to see this from a multiple complexes as opposed to a singular view. And we are softening as a result of coming out of our post-COVID event boom. So while in 2021, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, and the guy they met at the gas station came to the game, now it's just mom and dad. So as a result, our visitor counts are going to decrease. And then also matriculates to our overnight stays as well. So we'll start to see a softening. The good thing is, we're still on par or exceeding 2019 numbers, which is kind of our benchmark for that gap year. We don't, we don't even look at 2020. I'm not sure why we even put it on here anymore. But that's kind of where we're able to track, and that's what we'll look at moving forward, our comparison to 19 as, a, as a opposed to um, 21. A lot of us thought that this new environment would continue there's a lot of things going on. Everybody's back to work for the most part. Gas prices has significantly impacted travel. And, um, you know, this resurgence is coming on right as we're in the thick of our season. So all of that is starting to impact the numbers, not only at Grand Park, but throughout the country. So you will see that a little bit. I think we're, we're somewhat, I don't want to say insulated, but we're in a good position as it relates to we've got this break for training camp. We'll come back in the fall. Hopefully things will tamp down and we'll have a strong fall season. The field rent numbers, as Matt alluded to, are up uh, in excess of what we've done historically. So when we look at those counts, we've done a really good job of filling the calendar and finding the events. It's just those visitors' counts for those events are slightly down as a result of us getting back to normal operation. Um, this kind of just shows some of the year-over-year -year visit and visitor counts as well. Then, you know, again, I'm not sure why we put 2020 on there, but we're, start, we're, we're still pacing in a good level as compared to 20, I'm sorry, 2019. So while we will never forget 2021, it was a record-breaking year for us in multiple categories. Um, we're, we're starting to see that that wasn't as sustainable as we thought, and I think you'll, you'll hear Blake re refer to that a little bit as it relates to his numbers as well. Um, as it relates to business development, we've been doing a tremendous job. Again, you know, we, our budget for 2022, when we put it together, we were shooting for the moon. Um, 
I think we're getting ready to get to a point where I can comfortably say we've reached the stars, um, but we still got a little ways to go to get to where we want to be at the end of the year. For the year, uh, we've put on the books about $1.5 million in business. This is just for the quarter. So we're, we're really trending in the right direction. We've got a lot of contracts that are pending for this fall and winter that will continue to advance some of that. Uh, I, you know, I talked to Matt a little bit today. I don't think we will have an available date this fall in the event center at all um, as a result of some of the, the, the opportunities that have come our way. We discussed the rate card a little bit. So we are in a very unique position right now where um, some of the rate structures that were put in place from, from for some of our founding partners has expired. And due to our current position and the demand for the facility, we're really not in a position to advance them another discounted rate moving forward. So we've been working with them, but a lot of the rates for our high demand period will go to rack rate, which will also help um, bring us to where we need to be from a revenue standpoint. Matt also mentioned the addition of the field painting, lights, and all those things. Previously, those were all included in your rate. Now they will be pulled out and billed separately. So that will also help with some of our revenue lines as well. And that goes into effect on all 2023 contracts. So we're kind of working that in right here. Can I interrupt and ask, is that, yes. typ is that typical across the country at other facilities? Are they making the change or it's always been that way? Or We've always just baked it into the cost. We, yeah. We've always done an analysis to understand what our cost of goods sold were to make sure we were in line. Mm -hmm. Now that we, you know, instead of us, because there's a lot of groups that, you know, for our fields, that our turf fields, they have existing lines. Therefore, they won't need to, to pay for that additional cost. Mm -hmm. So we're really putting it on those users of the complex that kind of tax some of these other items. The lighting, um, we've just, we've never charged for it. Bullpen has historically charged for it. We just, for whatever reason, con did not make a decision to do so. We are advancing that and we are, you know, making that aware to all of our clients that it will be a part of their 2023 bills uh, for their events in 2023. But it's, you know, it's a mix. It just is the philosophy of the facility. Some of them just include it. Some of them kind of break it out and kind of do it a la carte. Okay. This is just some of the social updates. We've been, you know, kind of all over the place as it relates to this. A lot of good information has been shared um, on all of these different social media platforms. I'm not on hardly any of them, but we've got staff here that knows what they're doing, and they're put up all the right content to make sure people know what's going on at Grand Park. Um, Sponsorship-wise, I think last month, or I'm sorry, during our last report, we shared with you guys a number related to Q1. This is solely for Q2, the executed events, uh, contracts for sponsorship. While it's a small number in comparison to where I think we need to be, it's a growing number. Um, and to date, I think we've brought on more sponsors this year than we ever have historically. And we are now currently entertaining a handful <clears throat> that are looking at a, uh, some higher dollar sponsorships. But... A lot of good brands have chosen to associate with us. The McAllister's partnership is very unique. They pay us an upfront uh, fee for the sponsorship, as well as they have, um, not loan, they've given us 12, how many golf carts? 16 golf carts. And we will take those golf carts and rent those golf carts to our users. Historically, Matt's team would go down the street to the golf cart rental company and, and rent carts from them, and it's just a pass-through cost. Now, as part of our partnership, those 16 carts will go into his inventory that he will rent, that he will get revenue from. So very unique partnership, and we're kind of thinking outside of the box. We've recently added um, digital screens to all of the concession stands that just completed. We'll start to advertise for those. And then we've also brought on um, urinal and stall um, sign sponsorship opportunities. So. Uh, when you think about the number of urinals and, and stalls we have in the campus, that's a significant opportunity for us there from a sponsorship standpoint. So we're excited about getting those going as well. So hopefully these numbers will continue to grow. Uh, I am going to flip it over. Is Blake on? Okay. Yep. Blake, are you Thank on? Thank you, William. Yep. Perfect. Can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes. Uh, Blake Hibbler, Bullpen Tournament. President, sorry, I'm joining you from Atlanta. Uh, we're in the middle of our baseball season, so I am following my son around the country currently. So, thank you for letting me join remotely. Um, but uh, kind of want to 
re-echo everything that, that William and Matt have said. You know, quarter two was awesome for us. Uh, the greatest thing for us was there was no rain in June. Um, so while Matt and Ryan, I think, disagree with us on that, uh, it makes when you're playing five, six days a week a lot easier um, to manage. So our, our customer had a great experience in the month of June. The month of June is one of our biggest months. Uh, so it's really imperative that, you know, our customer leaves here with a good experience. Uh, so that helped us tremendously. Um, thank you to the RDC. Um, we were able to make the, and I'll talk on this in a little bit, but we were able to make the umpire locker room improvement. Uh, we went from the first two weeks of April, we had 290 games that had one umpire on the field. Uh, and then uh, had another 390 the next two weeks uh, and then we got the umpire locker room active we have had 10 games since putting the umpire locker room in that have had less than two umpires and 10 is almost less than any other year um, there's a lot of factor I mean it could be somebody got hurt it could be somebody you know got sick somebody had an emergency uh, that causes an occasional one of those so um, we also at the same time doing the locker room we also did a, a meal plan so Grand Westfield Restaurant Group now prepares a meal uh, for every um, umbar. So uh, they get to eat daily, and the umpire experience has grown considerably. It was one of our major concerns for sustainability. Uh, we feel really good heading into the fall in 23 and think we're going to continue to attract some of the better umpires. Um, so thank you for allowing that to happen. I'll show pictures later. Um, another thank you is the turf was installed in quarter two. Uh, we opened, uh, we got it done in April. They did it in four days on each field. Um, so if you haven't seen it, uh, playability, I mean, it's amazing the difference in the playability between one, three, or one, four compared to uh, three and five. Um, the kids, the players, the college guys are all making note of that. And, um, there's pictures here in a second on the next slide. So. Um, the Midwest Prospect League was our largest event of the year. Uh, that event starts on a Tuesday, runs through Sunday. It was a huge success this year. It, was, it will go down as probably one of the best events in the country um, from an exposure standpoint and a competition. We also had our amateur baseball championships on that weekend. This is the weekend of Father's Day. Uh, in years past, we had that weekend be – uh, a Division One and a Division Two. This year, we were able to split it into two events. Uh, and from a growth standpoint and a creating a, a excitement around Grand Park, um, it couldn't have been better received from the teams and the spectators. The park felt really alive on that side of the park this year. So uh, that weekend, Father's Day weekend, was probably one of our more successful weekends of the year. Um, in quarter two, our teams increased. 10% from last year to this year. Um, in large part, we, we kind of anticipated our visitors were going down. Um, so we felt like we had to do something to kind of maintain pace uh, and make sure that we, you know, we're still collecting the same, you know, gate revenues and hotel revenues and things like that. So we got a little more creative with our time use. Um, we actually expanded Grand Park this year a couple times where we started before the kids were out of school in May um, and April to try and help, you know, get more teams to the facility. So, um, Matt, if you can go to the next slide. Um, field improvements, here's Diamond 3 and Diamond 5. Um, Diamond 3, I mean, it's good aerial. You get to see what areas were actually replaced. It is a color change. It will always be a color change. That's the change in companies. Um, you know, from an aesthetic standpoint, it is what it is. Nobody really notices unless they're in the air, basically. But um, from a playability standpoint, it's increased. Uh, it, it plays a lot better. Um, some, something on Diamond 5, we put the bullpen logo uh, behind and had the mayor check it out before we did any more and before we added Grand Park. But we just saw that as another uh, really cool branding opportunity to just kind of show off uh, the facility. So we'll add... Um, we're, we're, we're contemplating where we're going to put Grand Park on the field, but we think we'll paint that. Um, it's not permanent. It is, you know, that we could get it off if need be, but we think it's a good addition to the facility. So you might see the bullpen and Grand Park start to pop up more on fields. You want to go to the next one, Matt? 
Um, this is a picture of the inside of the umpire locker room. You can see they have a TV, whiteboard. Um, you can see the usage in there. I mean, they're getting 40, 50 guys in there. Uh, the biggest difference has been the training. Anytime there's a rain delay, anytime there's a situation that needs to be talked about, they can bring the group together. It's given them a meeting space. It's given them a, you know, it's made them give them a sense of belonging. And uh, also through the winter, we've been able to do, a, like, since we've gotten the locker room, we've been able to do a drive where we're collecting uh, uniforms. We've made it free for new umpires to start with equipment and uniforms. It's given them a storage area for that. So, again, just continuing to improve kind of the, the player coach experience at Grand Park. If you want to go to the next one, Matt? Um, visitors to Grand Park and visits. It's been pretty heavy topic here. Um, I haven't seen the hotel numbers yet, but I'm going to venture to guess. Ours are down a tick again. Um, visitors are slightly up from 2019. Um, we felt like 2019, we were about capped. Uh, and that was one of the reasons that we actually did the Kokomo expansion. Um, so we knew we were kind of hit our, our peak. Um, so that's where the, the talks of Kokomo and championship park kind of came into play. So you, you kind of see us flatline a little bit because of that visits to grand park. Uh, you know, we've expanded, uh, our off sites. So, um, when a team, you know, unique visitors, you know, that's one-to-one, -one. but visits, you know, maybe somebody's only coming to grand park instead of being a four and a half time multiplier, maybe it's three and a half times now. Um, they may be going to, you know, Zinesville high school championship park, uh, Noblesville, Westfield, you know, one, one additional time. Um, so we've expanded our offsite to kind of help that. Next slide. Um, visitors kind of showed this so you can see where the drop is. So our games and our teams have kind of maintained uh, almost an exact line. Uh, that's a direct correlation. But the visitors per team, um, as you can tell with COVID, it was a drastic shot in the arm. Um, we have dropped considerably uh, per team on the visitors. So, you know, multitude of reasons that William talked about, um, you know, fuel costs, the inflation of the overall, uh, people are traveling together more, less, uh, you know, less, less, it, it's in my opinion, less families are traveling all together. Um, you're starting to see players travel with other players and families kind of share hotel rooms and, and those things are, kind of taking place now. I also think Chicago is a major um, demographic of bullpen tournaments. I think uh, you've seen Chicago people uh, return to work. Um, and when talking to Hamilton County Visitors Bureau, they indicated that uh, our traffic from Chicago is down 30%, not just bullpen, but Hamilton County. Uh, so I feel like that's got to have a, quite an impact on us. Our teams from Chicago are up, um, and, I, and I haven't been able to do a deeper dive, so that's, sure, that's purely speculation, but um, I would anticipate that our number of people coming from Chicago with the team is significantly less. Matt, if you want, yep, that's, that's it for us. Um, looking ahead to quarter three, uh, we're getting ready to, we just, we're in the middle of a 12-day straight run uh, with our ABC championships. The 17U ABC invite will wrap up tomorrow, um, and we will start our 15-year-old event on Wednesday, and we will go straight into the Alliance Softball National Championships, which is a new event this year. Uh, that will begin Saturday. Uh, I'm losing track of dates, but they'll start this Saturday and run through the following weekend. Um, that's 192 teams. Um, the softball national has teams from California, Texas. Uh, we have a three-year contract with that, and it's on one of our shoulder weekends. Um, so it was an additional weekend that we added this year. So I think that's going to be a great addition for concessions, for <clears throat> gate, for hotels, for you know just the overall park. Um, so excited to get quarter three, August will be, uh, uh, slow as always. We have a couple smaller events. Um, typically speaking though, August is a, a, a really slow month and we, we ramp up after Labor Day again. 
So with that, uh, myself, William, and Blake are available if you guys have any additional questions. Okay, appreciate the report. Any quick questions here from people? Yes, members? I'd like to ask William a few questions, please. <coughs> Sir. Okay, so first of all, um, We'd had some some uh, discussions last year in our one to one one on ones with you about different areas, revenue streams, things like that. I guess my question to you is, um, like I'm noticing concessions are down, and one of our topics was food. Uh, are we optimizing our our food services and our concessions, and are you guys evaluating that? And and where is that going? I mean, I know because there were some. Okay, I'll yeah, comment on that. I would say, and I'll, I'll let Matt speak to this a little bit as well, this is probably the best year we've had from a food service standpoint, from okay. a multitude of, of benchmarks. Um, our clients are extremely happy with the quality and, and, and what they're receiving. Now, just as hotels follow our visitor account, our concessions numbers will as well. So where they might have been, you know, they might still be averaging, and I, I don't know their average, 3 or $4, Per transaction, there's probably three or four thousand less people on a given weekend on a large weekend buying. So, okay. what I think we'll do, given some of the conversation around these numbers, is we can dig into these a little more and give you some more definitive answers related to some of the, the downturns in the revenue. But I would venture to say ninety percent of it is due to the decreased visitor count, based on the reduction in visits. Yep. And I was going to I was going to mention. Hey, William, I was going to say. Also, I mean. Just Go ahead. Having the numbers, like losing those couple weeks on the other side of the park to shut down grass really hurts the concession revenue as well. Yeah. As, as okay, coming from a background as a small business entrepreneur, I mean, the bars, the bar graphs show me trends, but I, it's really hard for me to evaluate it numbers-wise. I mean, because I can't tell, are you down 2%? Are you down 12%? For me, and I don't know how the others feel, but I would, I would, prefer to see numbers that I could, you know, look at and kind of base it on previous numbers instead of bars. Yeah. So um, Matt and I had a discussion today. I think what we're going to show you moving forward is, so we're doing year over year. I think it's also helpful for you to see um, a comparison to current budget for 22. Yeah. So we're going to add that, and we can definitely add yeah. the, the actual number and the percentage change between the two. Now, one last thing, and we talked about this too, but – if I'm a visitor and I'm coming to Grand Park and I want to buy a Grand Park t-shirt or a hat or something of that nature, where would I go to get that? So we are working on several preferred vendor opportunities for the campus. We've secured a few. There is a group that is very interested in deploying vending machines at each of the concession stands that would sell items like t-shirts, stickers, ponchos, all of those type of things. Um, We've had a few conversations with them. We're kind of vetting it a little more. This is a, a group that um, is coming out of, um, I forget the company, right off of 31, new to uh, West Hill. I'm, I can't believe I'm, but anyway, so we are having some discussions. Bullpen has a fairly robust uh, merchandising program for their apparel. We've never been in a position to do it on the other side of the campus, but now through this partnership, we're gonna look to expand that. Because, because I can tell you there, it's, it's, a, it's a big revenue stream yes. that you guys, are missing out on yep. big yep. time. Yes. So, and just Grand Park branded merchandise. People want to have something for where they go and visit. Yes. You know, they, and they even budget that into their. I mean, we see that at the races and, and everything. Sure. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I think there's a big opportunity and, there and that you guys are missing. We uh, so and we we kind of set ourselves up a little bit initially to not take full advantage of that because all of our event producers have apparel for their particular event, but none of that bears the Grand Park mark. So. Right. Some of those, you know, relationships will change in the future as well, so particularly as we're doing these preferred vendors. The way they're set up, they are kind of in certain categories, the vetted individual that has the rights to do things on campus such that Grand Park can receive some of that revenue. Okay. Okay. Very, very. Can I just ask you, Will, while you're up here, are all of the uh, sponsorships now sold by LSG? Yes. So you have 100% of yep. that. We don't have any kind of. Nope. Crossing over. There are so. probably a handful that are still being, actually, I don't think there's any being paid out as a result of 
previous agreements, um, but there might be a handful of those, but all the active sales right now are being done through LSU. Okay, and everyone's heard about ND11 and the purchase and all this. Yep. Have we seen any effect of this yet, no, or do you think we will? No. And I think there was talk of ND11 bringing women. Yes, you. so we've seen a positive impact. Matt mentioned the W League, yeah. and um, they're also bringing on a second team on the women's side as well. Um, the stadium, yes. The stadium will be their primary playing location, but they will always, from what we understand, they will always use Grant Park as their training facility. And as we expand some of our assets on campus, they could look to um, produce some of their W League and um, Second League games at the campus, which is not currently being done. Okay. And then um, when I visited Bullpen last, <clears throat> about this time last year, there's that house on 191st Street next to their offices. Mm -hmm. What is that being utilized for now? Yep. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> yeah, so that's currently a storage location for several items that uh, my staff takes care of. Um, in years past, it was an off-site location for um, some office space, but traditionally, uh, since that point, has been storage that my team utilizes. Okay, and, and you and I talked at a meeting about all the storage that's going on next to the Indy 11 office, kind of north of that. And uh, <clears throat> have we ever looked at any better way of storing all that stuff? Because there's yeah, I'm glad you asked. tractor trailers and all kinds of stuff I'm glad you asked. Yes, there. I have so, in, in my capital plans to have a, a building to <clears throat> officially store a lot of that equipment. Um, again, with, with a lot of the event base that we bring on, it comes with that set of material, whether it be a pod or a trailer for right. a one-off. Um, for instance, you'll see it now for the next month and a half with Colts Training Colts Camp. Stuff, I know. Um, yeah. But yes, in regards to the Graham Park owned assets, in my capital plan <coughs> downrange, I would like to have a fixed building that would be able to store all of that equipment. So that house isn't part of that plan? Percent. Not in that plan, no ma'am. Okay, good. Okay. Bullpen Turner Thank you. does have interest in that land. Now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Blake, for uh, zooming in here on us. Uh, appreciate that. Thank you, Matt and William. Good presentation. Next item is Jeremy Lawler. Sure. Thank you all. Uh, given the time and the robust amount of conversation associated with Grand Park, I think we'll just go ahead and table uh, this Grand Junction Plaza offices conversation. It was just going to be an introductory uh, conversation about some plans that I would like to pitch to you all. Uh, on a property that we own there at 201 Mill Street adjacent to Grand. Okay, you want to roll over to the next meeting? Yeah, we'll roll it over. And what I'll do is I will type up a, a, a short narrative or a narrative of kind of what we were going to discuss tonight to give you in advance, and then that'll progress the conversation for the next okay, meeting. If that's, that's great. Okay. Great and idea. And we can have Jeremy. some in, yeah. you know question and answer as yeah. a part of that email too, if you want. Appreciate that. Yep. Okay. Thank you, John. Anything else for additional business? No additional business. I just want to make sure we get the okay. signatures. Okay, yeah, we'll stick around for signing the paperwork that's necessary. Okay, oh. and, and can I ask, because um, Manny, and I think he's on the line tonight, is Jim Treat on with us tonight? But Manny suggested that Bob and I sit down with John and Jim and go over with some, uh, go over the TIF funds and suggested uses and future projections and all. So can we set up a meeting and do that? Yeah, Jim, Jim Treat is not on the line. Jim's um, not on, okay. But we can certainly coordinate a meeting between the five of us or okay. whomever, whomever needs to be there. Very good. If there's nothing okay. else uh, on the agenda, we'll consider meeting adjourned at uh, 7.54. 6.54, okay. running up against the timeline here. We got anxious.